So you don't like statins. You've heard a lot of bad things about them. <clears throat> um, me too. I uh, heard a lot of bad things about statins as well. In fact, I um, delayed taking statins for about three years and uh, had some catch up to do when I found that I had plaque in my arteries. Um, <clears throat> you can see other videos on that. But let's talk about the true risk benefit of statins. In my patient population, we're baby boomers. A lot of us uh, grew up with a very natural approach uh, to, every, to our lives, including uh, medicine. <clears throat> so I understand. There's also bigger reasons to be concerned about uh, statins, and we'll talk about those in just a minute. This is Ford Brewer with PrevMed, heart attack, stroke, cancer disability prevention. We, uh, we can help you get a couple of more decades of really healthy life. What's the story on risk benefits with statins? <clears throat> you know, it's interesting. I had one patient come in to me and he said, I don't have, um, a, I don't have a lot of risks. I've got great genetics. I am in my mid-60s. I did have a, a syncopal event, a fainting spell. I went to the ER doc. He told me, I think you're okay. I looked through your enzymes, your EKG. Everything looks good, but you ought to take this statin. I didn't like that opinion. Uh, so I went to, this is my patient, by the way, speaking. And he said, I didn't like that opinion, so I went to a cardiologist. Cardiologist did a complete workup. He finished his workup and he said, you look great, <clears throat> you don't have a lot of risk, but you may want to start taking this medication. It was a statin. He came to see me <clears throat> and uh, you know where the, guess where this went. So I did a full evaluation on him and he did have, he was in pretty good shape, but he did have some drivers of inflammation. And I said, you're in great shape, but you may want to be taking a statin. Now, why is the medical community so headstrong and hell-bent on recommending statins? Well, because we've looked at the literature. <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> I'm going to go over this a little bit more deeply over the next, uh, next few minutes. But the bottom line is... If you look at the actual risk and benefits, you take all the studies that have been done, you, under, you begin to understand very clearly why we recommend it. So, <clears throat> but why so much fear around statins? Here's what happened. Back in 2013, the British Medical Journal published an article which basically said, we have grossly underestimated the side effects of statins in our, uh, in our randomized clinical trials and in our reports. They're far worse than we thought. So <clears throat> you saw a public health ripple. A lot of different um, uh, news sources picked this up. Statins are dangerous. And um, you know where this went. A lot. Of, actually, you also saw a lot of people go off their statins. You could see that from the um, from the pharmacy uh, use utilization data. A lot of folks that should have started on statins didn't. Uh, yours truly included. And uh, if you look again, if you look at the public health data, uh, especially in uh, Europe and the U.S some significant increases in heart attack and stroke for a time period there. But let's go back again and look at the data. There's still this debate in the literature. There's this debate on YouTubes. Uh, there's just a lot of debate. But let's look at, let's look at what we would call a meta-analysis. <clears throat> um, so, statins do cause problems. In fact, on this meta-analysis, they assumed uh, 10,000 people taking statin. Uh, problem number one, myopathy. Uh, that's where you get breakdown of the muscle. Now, a lot of us, it's fairly common. Um, 
10 to 20 percent sometimes can get some occasional cramping and muscle soreness. The reality is that maybe that's not all statins. Um, there are things that we can do to help with that. <clears throat> but myopathy, true breakdown of the muscle, can cause kidney damage and even death. So we're not, talk we're not playing here in terms of side effects. Um, new onset diabetes, 50 to 100 out of this 10,000, I think over a five year period. Now, <clears throat> need to clarify what that means. Di uh, statins do push you down that diabetic highway. But if somebody does not have any diabetic tendencies, if they're not having st the start of insulin resistance, the statins really aren't going to create a diabetic out of the blue. This next item, um, <clears throat> hemorrhagic stroke. There's been, there was some uh, question in the, in the science and the literature, some reports that uh, statins may cause hemorrhagic stroke. Now, the vast majority of that, <clears throat> maybe all of it, has really not panned out to be that uh, reliable. So most of us don't really believe that statins cause hemorrhagic stroke. But let's look at the numbers. <clears throat> 550 to 100 people. So we're talking about 100 people out of this 10,000, 105, 50 to 105, uh, maybe 120. <clears throat> out of these 10,000 people having significant side effects, some of them, most of them not, but some of them being so bad that they may cause death. Now let's look, so that is the risk side of the statin equation. Now let's look at the benefit side. Let's assume that same 10,000 people does not take statins. And this is, again, this is in groups that have moderate to high risk. We're not talking about giving uh, statins or not giving statins to 20 year olds. We're talking about middle aged baby boomers that uh, are getting into that age of risk for statins. Well, if it's a moderate risk group, what we avoided was 500 deaths due to cardiovascular disease, heart attack, stroke. Um, and if it was a higher risk population, that 10,000, you're talking about avoiding a thousand deaths due to cardiovascular risk and stroke. So <clears throat> yes, there's no question. Statins do have side effects and side effects bad enough to kill you. But <clears throat> You pick your poison, and uh, after looking at the data, I'm clearly going the statin route.